And now for a session presented by Royal Commission for Olula. Please welcome Annette Gibbons-Warren, Art in the Landscape Projects Director at Royal Commission for Alula, and Melanie D'Souza, Executive Director, Destination Marketing at Royal Commission for Alula, in conversation with Skift Commercial Director, EMEA, Kate Irwin. Good afternoon. Hi. Excuse us while we just get comfortable. <laughs> Melanie Annette. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Good afternoon. As we approach the end of an incredible day one, uh, we hope you've had a, a great day. Annette, Melanie, thank you for joining me. It's going to be a pleasure to have this conversation today. In today's session, we're going to explore the role that cultures and arts can play in destination placemaking. For those who aren't that familiar, Alula is an incredibly gorgeous, I think we actually have some images, incredible gorgeous region in the northwest of Saudi. Um, it's actually under deep development right now as part of the Crown Prince's vision for 2030. Melanie, can you just talk a little bit about the destination um, and also a bit about the history? Thank you, Kate. And can I just begin by saying it's terrific to see this Skift Forum in Dubai. Thank you, Rafat, and thank you, team from Skift. Um, we really do feel privileged to be talking about a destination that is synonymous with 7,000 years of civilization and over 200,000 years of human history. At its heart, we're a boutique heritage and cultural destination, and more on the cultural bit in a second, Annette. But if you think about us, I guess our most iconic image is Hegra, which one associates with the Nabataeans, who of course are also are known for having left an amazing legacy in Petra in Jordan. Um, if you think about our heritage sites, there's Dadan and Leonite civilizations that are perhaps the civilizations we're most excited about. These are the ancient North Arabian civilizations that the world doesn't know much about, um, but that will redefine what we know about human history. And I know that's a big statement. It's the site of major diggings, um, some of the largest archaeological diggings in the world. You add to that this open library, where creative expression over the millennia has been certainly rife, great rock inscriptions, um, civilizations telling about their lives and times from hunting scenes to war scenes. You add to that the old town, occupied consistently for 800 years till as recently as 40 years ago. And then you take what is our spectacular natural settings. Only that master sculpture, Mother Nature, could have done what it has done in terms of these rocky outcrops juxtaposed with our oasis, this green spine that runs through the center of Alula. And of course, we were always on the caravan route. We were known as a place mm -hmm. that was the natural place for people to stop and exchange, whether it was goods or incense or the like, but most importantly, culture and ideas. And what you really have then with a prolific calendar of year-round events that celebrates our brand pillars, our heritage, our arts, mm -hmm. skies and wellness, you pretty have a very compelling off offering and many reasons why you should put in your calendar and market destination Alula. So historically, you've always been the center of this <clears throat> cultural exchange. How are you taking that kind of deep heritage uh, and allowing it to influence how you develop the destination, but also how you present it to the world? So we're very um, mindful of the huge responsibility we have with this legacy, and we absolutely want to protect and preserve our heritage assets. Sustainability runs as a very key theme, um, you know, right through our ethos in the way we approach our built environment, the way we engage our suppliers, right down to how we're writing our RFPs. Um, and really at the heart of what we're trying to do for the 46,000 people that call Alula home is ensure that those locals are in fact the beneficiaries of the tourism That's endeavor. It. So I think you take that as you know, a, a, a given and building on it, how can we be true to our legacy but simultaneously 
um, celebrate the best of the best, whether it's in archaeology or architecture or indeed creative expression. And I think Annette will have a lot more to say about that. <laughs> yeah, okay, so let's switch to Annette. Um, Annette, Alula has, has definitely started its journey uh, to becoming an international arts destination. Um, can you talk a little bit about some of the projects that you have participated and announced? Um, Desert X Alula being one that you mm -hmm. recently hosted, and also the recent announced uh, Wadi Al Fan project. Of course. Um, Alula is an extraordinary place, as you can see. Epic vistas, giant geological structures, thousands of monuments, rock art, inscriptions throughout the landscape. We speak of Alola as a living museum because it has a remarkable creative legacy and it's an extraordinary inspiration to artists and creatives of today. So the, the purpose of Arts Alola, the vision for arts in Alola, is to, is to build upon these, this creative legacy, to build creative new, new layers of creativity, to engage artists, to build cult sustainable cultural infrastructure, sustainable creative industries, and to create programs and audiences that we will migrate into our museums and our cultural assets when we open them. You mentioned Desert X Alola and Wadi Al Fan, and they're two brilliant examples of, of our intention. Desert X Alola uh, is a temporary exhibition of outdoor commissions outdoor, made for the landscape, site-specific, unique, stunning, beautiful artworks. We've hosted two editions, delivered two editions, in 2020 and in 2022, and we're pleased to be already working on 2024. We partnered with DesertX, which originates out of Cal Palm Springs in California, mm -hmm. and working with the remarkable artistic directors and vision of Neville Wakefield and Raneem Farsi to commission Saudi, regional, and international artists to build commissions in the landscape around which our, our visitors are immersed in the beautiful landscape and encounter these artworks that are in direct dialogue. Desert X 2020 was phenomenally received by our local community. Uh, 2022 then exceeded all our visitor expectations with many numbers of our local community returning through family programs, through schools programs, and millions visiting online. It really served as a catalyst for us to consider the, the scale and ambition to further develop the ambition for permanent assets like Wadi Al Fan. Mm -hmm. So you mentioned we, uh, we announced Wadi Al Fan earlier this year in June. It will be a permanent intervention in the landscape, unparalleled and unprecedented, a global landmark for arts. We're really pleased to be working with icon and pioneer artists to develop era-defining commissions in, di in direct dialogue with the monumental landscape. We've announced that we're working with James Turrell, with Michael Heiser, with Agnes Dennis, Manal al Duayan, Ahmed Mata, icons in the field of land art and will be working to integrate their artworks through 65 square kilometers of pristine wow. landscape with 60 kilometers of hiking trails and stunning, stunning natural and beautiful experiences where you will encounter artworks in an unmediated experience of the landscape. It's truly, it's truly a scale unseen <laughs> um, mm -hmm. and in terms of the impact and legacy of this project. It really writes a new chapter in art history, um, and it can't, the importance of it can't be understated. So I have a question. How do you maintain that authentic and local creative uh, industry whilst also balancing the need for speedy, exciting, Instagrammable art projects that we know can drive tourism? Yeah. Well, I'd say that we absolutely always work on the long term and the short term. Mm -hmm. So we work very closely with our colleagues in tourism to ensure that we're building audiences and we're building programs that engage our local communities, that build uh, a sustainable creative industry, that we're buying locally, that we're building industries locally. 
so that we can build our, our, our permanent um, cultural museums and assets. Within the ethos of Alola, authenticity is easy because yeah. the development of Alola is informed entirely by the protection, exploration, and sharing of, of Alola's cultural and natural heritage, the stories of its people that we're revealing through the lens of contemporary art. Yeah. Authenticity means honoring the unique character of Alola. And I think it's poignant to note that we opened, when we opened Desert X 2020, on the same day we opened Madrasa Tadira, which is a key cornerstone of our, of our cultural intention, of our arts intention. It is Alola's center for art and design. And in working with the Prince's School of Traditional Arts in Turquoise Mountain, we're training around 70 to 80 local people every year in design and art making, in product making, and many of whom are now setting up their own businesses and starting and forging the, the creative industries that will, sustain, uh, that will sustain our vision. We're developing opportunities for sustainable art and creative industries development, jobs, commerce, museums that have learning engagement at their heart and commissioning artworks and products that are made as locally as possible. So made for Alola, by Alola. So that, that balance is being <laughs> finally treaded in an incredible way. Alola's a long been, uh, long been a place yeah. for art making. And artists tell us that the opportunity of working in, Al in Alola with the ambition yeah. that we have is like nowhere else. So they produce things that can happen nowhere else. It's incredibly exciting and always yeah. authentic. Amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, Melanie, just to, to kind of talk a little bit about Alula has often been referenced as a young destination, but with ancient roots. Um, you're in the most unique position ever. You're envisaging a destination ahead of you. And you are creating your tourism eco-structure from, from scratch. So I'm sure you've learned some things along the way. Best practices, lessons learned, what can you kind of share today? So the first thing I might just um, remark on are some of the images that you've seen behind us mm -hmm. on the screen. And in terms of that theme of being respectful of legacies and respectful of what is a fantastic natural setting, Mariah, that largest mirrored building in the world that is both our concert venue and our multi-purpose conference venue. Um, just a tremendous example of a piece of architecture um, that is won the Guinness Book of Records for the largest mirrored building in the world, but that makes a statement. And another um, architectural statement will be a project that's still in motion, the Jean Nouvel Design Resort, that is going to be a feat of engineering in one of the rock faces in Chiran Nature Reserve. Um, but I think we have very high ambitions for tourism in this country. Uh, we only opened our doors three years ago as a country. Um, and while we have in um, uh, many of our destinations within Saudi Arabia a really thoughtful, considered approach about how we're going about our development, we shouldn't pretend that we have an established DMC uh, ecosystem or multilingual um, guides that is a plentiful resource we can draw from. So there's a lot of work going in at a grassroots level to upskill, to train, and to fast track people um, in terms of being able to deliver at the highest levels of expectations of what is our cultured thinking tourist. They are twice as valuable um, for us as the normal tourist. These are people who want to travel for meaning and for purpose. And for us, it's about how can we deliver at that high level um, in, in a very thoughtful way. Understood. Mm. As we're wrapping up, we're just coming to the end of our time in this conversation. So let's move our vision slightly. Um, as we look a little further out, Mali, what are you hoping Alula will invoke in the travel industry, in the international tourism community, say 10, 10 years down the line? Well, I know it's an ambitious statement, but I hope we will be the case study for how destinations should be developed. Um, we really do want to make sure that we are working in partnership, um, whether that's at an intergovernment level or indeed with the likes of UNESCO, mm -hmm. or importantly from where I sit with our partners in the travel distribution systems, with the media to tell what is a very compelling story, a relatively new one, 
and one that must be told. Thank you so much. So for those who are looking to explore Alula further, you can head over to experiencealula.com where you'll be able to find more. It's been fabulous sharing the stage with you both. Thank you for your time and thanks for being here, guys. Thank you, kids. Thank you. Thank you.